chapter 6 Theory of the Firm and Market Chapter 6.1 Introduction and Perfect Competition In another video, Chapter 6.2 is about the monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic. Theory of the Firm and Market Structures Market structure refers to the number and distribution size of buyers and sellers in the market for particular goods and services. There are four types of market structure, perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. This slide is very important. Here I show you the difference between each market structure from perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic, and oligopoly. In terms of the number of uh, sellers, in perfect competition, there are too many sellers selling the same product, identical or homogeneous product, okay, a similar product. So that's why in perfect competition, there are many rival, many competitors. So there are many substitute goods. For monopolistic, there are many sellers, same that product. However, that product is unique. There are many substitute, but not perfect substitute. Okay, it is only a close substitute. But here in perfect competition, okay, the product is homogeneous, similar 100%. In perfect competition, okay, that's why the product is perfect substitute to each other. In monopolistic, close substitute. There are still many competitors. However, not as many as perfect competition. In perfect competition, there are too many, but here many sellers. While in oligopoly, there are only few sellers. Few. Okay, from two onwards. It could be two firms only. Or three up to 10 or 20, there's no specific limit. If there is only two firms selling the, the same product, okay, they substitute for each other, the two firms. So the specific name for that duopoly, the, that oligopoly is duopoly. This duopoly is still in oligopoly, but specific case for two firms only. If three, four, five, ten firms or seller, okay, the name is oligopoly. Two firms, oligopoly or duopoly. Okay, this firm they sell items or product which is differentiated with each other. In monopoly, mono means one. So there is only one seller. Okay, selling the, the different product or heterogeneous. Uh, just now is homogeneous. Acronym for homogeneous is heterogeneous. So the product which is um, totally different from others. So there's no competitors, only one seller. Okay, so no substitute. In terms of easy enter and exit in the market. In the perfect competition, it is very easy to enter the market. Okay, for example, if you want to sell um, vegetable, you want to sell a burger store or maybe um, fried banana, okay, it's very easy. You can join the market selling the same product. If the existing firm uh, maybe uh, enjoy the profit, okay, so you want to join and sell the same product, okay, you can sell it. Okay, because it's very easy to join, to enter the market. However, if you uh, occur loss, okay, it is very easy to, to exit the market. Very easy in perfect competition. In monopolistic, still easy, but not as easy as perfect competition, but easy compared to oligopoly. In oligopoly, it is not easy. In monopoly, it is blocked. Enter and exit. 
Okay, I'll give you an example here, okay, to make it a clearer uh, picture here. For example, in perfect competition is the weight of flour, or corn, or rice. This product has many sellers, and the product is identical, which is perfect substitute. Okay, here um, we assume that that rice, or flour, or wheat don't have any brand. So it's just similar. For example, the potato, the carrot. Okay, if you buy from the market and then when you um when you um open it in your kitchen, okay, you can see that there's no difference between this vegetable that you buy from another seller with another seller. Okay, for the same product. Okay, so that's why it is perfect substitute. And then there are many sellers selling those things. Okay, and it's very easy to enter the market and also exit the market. Okay, so no power to control the price because many sellers and the product is perfect substitute to each other. So you don't have power to control the price. If you increase a price a little bit, yes, uh, the buyers will buy from another seller. So that's why no power to control the price. You follow the price of the market. Okay, in market equilibrium, the price equilibrium determined by the, inter the interaction between demand and seller okay, of the market. So you get the price, equilibrium or market price. So in perfect competition, the firm has no power to control the price. So that's why you only get a normal profit here. Normal profit means break even. Okay, There's no profit, there's no loss. Or when you um, deduct total revenue with uh, total cost, you only get zero, break even. Okay, in reality, there is profit, but not much. But this is a theory. So a theory, uh, it's um, it's quite extreme. So just put zero there. There's no profit or loss, okay, which is break even for perfect competition. However, for monopolistic, the example is food, clothing. Okay. So closing um, the firm, okay, they have their own brand. Same with the food, maybe in terms of packaging. Okay, that makes the product unique from others. Many sellers same those products. Okay, talk about the brand, for example, the rice. If the rice has no brand at all, okay, for example, beras timbang tu. Okay, so you cannot differentiate this beras and this beras. When you make, you cannot differentiate. But if that beras, you can, when you uh, arrive home, okay, you can differentiate between this beras, this is jasmine beras, and this is maybe rambutan, maybe uh, faiza, basmati, okay, so that product fall into monopolistic, okay, it is unique. Another example is shampoo or shower gel. Okay, it is differentiated or unique in terms of the packaging, in terms of the coloring, maybe in terms of the smell. Okay, so many sellers selling the shampoos, the soap, okay, and easy enter and easy exit. And then some power to control the price. Maybe your price compared to your competitor a bit expensive, but people still buy from you because of beautiful packaging because smelling too good okay so that's why you have some power to control the price so that's why if you notice if you go supermarket you can see that the price of the shampoo not too far from each other and then for oligopoly okay before that the profit in the monopoly state okay the firm will get normal profit just similar with the perfect competition because many seller many competitors this is too many competitors. In oligopoly, the example is uh, the firm that uh, only, uh, the, the product that has only a few sellers or firms, for example, automobile. In the case of Malaysia, there are only two firms selling the national car, Proton and Rodua. So it can be duopoly or oligopoly. If you, um, large the scope for automobile, uh, including the import automobile, so it can be more than two 
including Honda, Toyota, BMW, but still a few seller. Okay, so it is differentiated product, not easy to enter and exit. Okay, including the um, telecommunication company, you have Telcom, Maxis. Okay, you have some power to control of the price. Why some power compared to uh, perfect competition? Because it is only a few seller and the product is differ differ differentiated. Okay, so that's why in the long run, you get economic profit. Economic profit is positive. The value is positive. Here, the value is zero, zero per even. Here is positive. For monopoly, monopoly also known as monopolies. Okay, don't confuse with monopolistic. Monopolistic is monopolistic competition. Monopoly sometimes they call as monopolies. Okay, it is only one seller. They no substitute. The product is heterogeneous, different, and then to join the market, it is blocked. Only one firm allowed to uh, operate in that market. And then if that market occur loss, okay, it is blocked to exit. You still have to run the business. And because only one seller, so that firm has power to control the price. So this is has power to control the price. So in the long run, it can get economic profit. The example is elasticity. ENB. There is only one electricity supplier in Malaysia, which is ENB, so monopoly. Okay, the profit here um, refer to a long run profit, but in the short run, the firm, whether perfect competition, monopoly state, oligopoly, or monopoly, might occur loss or break even or positive profit. But in the long run, these two firms only get normal profit and these two firms will enjoy the economic profit or positive profit. Profit here, if you still remember in chapter 5, cost and production, profit is the total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue is P times Q, price per unit times the number of sales or Q output, and you get the total revenue. The difference between TR and TC is the profit or the symbol is phi. Yeah. So if total revenue larger than total cost, you will get positive profit. If total revenue less than total cost, it is a loss. The profit is negative. But if total revenue equal to total cost, the value of profit is zero, which is break even. Determination of equilibrium of a firm. There are two approaches to determine the profit maximizing level of output. You will see many um times the these terms okay in the past year exam okay this one is very important profit maximizing level of output means uh, you as a firm you want to determine at which output or quantity you should produce so that in that amount of quantity you get a maximum profit remember the objective one of the objective of the seller or firms is to maximize the profit so to determine the profit maximizing level of output, okay, or in that level, the equilibrium is achieved, you can use two approach. The first approach is total revenue minus total cost, PR minus PC. Okay, this is a formula to get a profit. The largest difference between PR and PC, that's the maximum profit, as long as it is positive. Okay, the equilibrium point will be at output where the difference between TCTR is the greatest, also known as profit maximization point. 
If they are equal to TC, it is a break-even point. This approach or method, also known as aggregate approach. The other approach is MRMC or marginal approach. Okay, so there are two approaches, TRTC and then marginal approach. We look the example of the first approach first, aggregate approach or TR minus TC method. Okay, this is example. The first column is the output Q or TP, total production, and this is the price. Then you get the total revenue when P times Q, you get total revenue here. And then total cost is given. And then profit you can calculate if you have the RTC. The R minus TC here, you get the profit. Okay, at the last column here. So if you look at the example, in which market structure do you think this firm operate? Is it in perfect competition, oligopoly, only a monopolistic or monopoly? Which one? The answer is perfect competition. Why I'm saying that? Because the price is constant. Here, yeah, the price. So if you look at the price, you know that this firm operate in the perfect competition. Because in perfect competition, there is no power at all to control the price. The price is determined by the market. So regardless how much output or quantity you produce, zero, okay, less or more output, the price is remains the same, static. So no power to control the price. This is in perfect competition um, market. So if you look at the profit here, at first, if you just uh, produce um, in small scale, okay, you uh, facing loss here, negative. Okay, why? Because revenue less than total cost. Okay, but as more output you produce, the lesser the profit is until the R equal to TC or the profit is zero. At this level is the break even. The higher output you produce, the more profit. The profit is increasing until it reaches a maximum point here at 40. Okay, that is the profit maximizing point. But if more output you produce, the profit, you still get profit but with lesser amount until you reach zero again, break even, and then negative loss again. Okay, so the profit maximizing point is 40. So you should produce output or quantity at 9 units so that your firm enjoy maximize or maximum profit. Okay, this is the same table as before. So you have the RPC and the cost. You can draw this curve. First, we combine these two curves, total revenue and total cost in this diagram. Total revenue keep increasing. Okay, when output zero, it is zero. So it start with origin here, and then keep increasing total revenue. 45 degree here, and then total cost. Total cost, okay, when you draw, okay, you get this line. Okay, so production at this um, distance, or this amount, okay, you're facing loss here because total cost is higher than total revenue. So this is loss, but the loss become lesser as more output you produce. Okay, at point four, it is a break even. Where TR equal to TC, so the profit here is zero. So this is the profit. Profit negative become lesser. Uh, the, the loss become lesser. This is the loss. Below zero is negative. So that is loss. 
but the loss become lesser the more output you you produce until you reach the break even point here and then this stage total revenue higher than total cost total cost is below okay total revenue is above total cost so that's why the profit increasing positive okay you enjoy a profit here and then the profit become increasing as more product you produce until it reach a maximum point here okay at um maximum point when profit is 40 or when output is 9 here 40 and 9 Okay, so the difference between the RTC, this is profit become larger and larger until it reach a maximum point here. Because the difference, the vertical difference between the RTC here is the largest. So that's why profit is maximum. When you produce more and more output, you still enjoy the profit but with lesser amount. Okay, your profit declining until it reach zero again, which is break even. Or here, this is break even point. And if you keep producing the output, okay, so it is a negative because total cost higher than. The second approach or method is the marginal revenue, marginal cost, the difference, okay, or marginal approach. The firm can maximize the profit when the marginal revenue equal the marginal cost mr equal to mc this output produced at this level also known as optimum output or profit maximizing um, output okay so mr equal to mc in last chapter chapter 5 cost and production to get mc is change in tc over change in q Marginal revenue change in total revenue over change in Q. And then marginal cost must cut marginal revenue from below. We'll see in the diagram later. Okay, this is the same example uh, we just now. This is the output Q. This is the price. This is the total cost. And then this is total revenue. and profit the new terms here is the marginal revenue and marginal cost okay so you have a new data here to get marginal revenue is change in tr over change in q so change in tr here is 25 divided by change in q is 1 so that's why you get 25 okay next the change in tr is still 25 divided by change in output still 1, so that's why you get 25. Total uh, marginal cost is change in total cost divided by change in Q. So change in TC here divided by change in Q here, okay, you get 24. So to get the profit maximizing output, you have to find a value where MR equal to MC. MR for perfect competition is always static, 25. So similar with the price. So in perfect competition, price equal to marginal revenue. So find the value where MC close to 25 is here. Okay, or you can... Um, See the profit maximum here at 40. So this is the equilibrium or profit maximizing output level. This is the output which is maximizing the profit here. Okay, at 40, profit output is 9. MR equal to MC at 25. When you draw the diagram, remember MR is equal to price, always at 25 regardless how much output you produce. MC is dropped at first and then increasing. 
So when MR equal to MC cross here, so this is the output maximizing the profit, which is 9 at price 25 ringgit. Give it another example. You have Q, you have P again, and then you have total revenue when you times P and Q, and then you get total cost. Okay, you don't have to calculate profit here. Okay, you, we use uh, the second approach, MR equal to MC. MR is equal uh, to 5, which is similar with the price in perfect competition only. Okay, so find the MC 5, which is similar with MR okay, at this level. So here you can determine the output maximizing profit, which is at 3 at price. Five ringgit. Okay, so this is the price MR. Okay, equal to price five ringgit. Okay, and then this is MC curve closing with MR at three unit of output. Okay, in perfect competition, it is very easy to determine the price because the price only one five ringgit here. MR equal to P and then equal to average revenue too. So here, if you calculate the average revenue, okay, average revenue, the formula is PR divided by Q. So if PR here divided by Q, 5 divided by 1, you get 5. 10 divided by 2, you get 5. 30 divided by 6, you get 5. So that's why in perfect competition, MR equal to price equal to average revenue and equal to demand too. Okay, so I, I show you later why it, it is equal to demand in the next slide. Okay, so these four components equal, which is 25 or 5 in this example. This is the characteristic of perfect competition. I will not uh, elaborate further here because I already explained in the uh, when we do the different uh, differentiation between each market structure in the earlier slide just now. So I just read this one for the characteristic of perfect competition, also known as pure competition. The number of seller is too large, too many. Okay, so their size is more relative to the size of the market because there are too many sellers in the market. And then selling homogeneous product, product that is standardized. Okay, so advertising is totally absent in this market because it is 100% similar, same product. It is perfect substitute to each other. And then the firm very easy enter and exit the market. No restriction is imposed. Firm face no barrier to enter and exit the market. If you find that uh, that market enjoy a profit you can join selling the same product and if you are facing loss you can exit you can shut down the company and stop your business okay there's no restriction and then the firm is a price taker remember the price is static at 25 25 or 5 5 okay no power at all to control the price because price is determined through market forces between demand and supply, so you don't have any power to control the price. You just follow the price of the equilibrium or market price. And then it is assumed that the perfect knowledge of the market. So both seller and buyers have perfect knowledge about the market situation. Okay, this means they know the prevailing prices in the market. Okay, you as a seller, you know other sellers sell at what price. And then the buyers know, okay, each firm sell at what price? So if you increase the price just a little bit, okay, you don't have any buyer. Okay, so that's why you uh, won't increase the price. And then perfect mobility of factor of production, since you are selling the same product, okay, so your staff, your staff is a labor, which is one of the factor of production. They can quit from your company and go work to another company because they produce the same product. Okay, factor of production, especially labor, are free to move from one place to another without any restriction or rules from the government. 
give 50 month of perfect competition. Okay, if you still remember, MR equal to AR equal to demand equal to price. 25 here, 25, 25. Okay, price of the market, 25. We, uh, this one we uh, refer to a demand curve for that firm. Okay, so this is the market. Price of the market and quantity of the market. So market demand, supply of the market. Equilibrium here when demand equal to supply. Okay, let's say at 25 ringgit. Okay, you as the firm, this is demand market, this is demand firm. You as the firm, you just follow price of the firm of the market at 25 here. So at this price, regardless how much you produce, okay, many, lesser, or even zero, the price will be at 25. So this is your demand curve. Okay. That's the difference between demand of the market and individual firm demand curve. Okay. So that's why in perfect competition, MR equal to AR equal to demand and equal to price short run equilibrium we have two uh, time period short run and long run okay in the short run the equilibrium there are three possible condition okay whether your firm get economic profit normal profit or loss economic profit also known as super normal profit or positive profit Okay, break even on normal profit, which is profit equal to zero, and then economic loss or subnormal profit or negative profit. Okay, first we look at the diagram for economic profit or supernormal profit. Okay, a condition where the total revenue is greater than total cost. We are more than CC or here. So this is the first uh, curve MR, AR, price and demand. Okay, and then you have average total cost here, and then average variable cost, and then marginal cost. Okay, this is similar with chapter um, 5. Okay, so equilibrium happens when MR equal to MC or closing here. So here, the output is 9 price at 25. Okay, at this dash dash line, the vertical dash line here, touching ATC here, okay, so here, this box is the total cost. Okay, the whole box here refer to total cost. And this is AR, average revenue. This is average cost, ATC or AC. Okay, average cost dash dash line here, touching here at equilibrium. So the whole bigger box here refer to total revenue. So this total revenue box minus total cost box here, you get this, the difference. So the difference here is the profit. Okay, so if you want to see the total revenue, you look at AC. Total cost, you look at uh, sorry, this is AR and this is AC. Okay, why? Because AR, the formula is TR divided by Q. So to get the TR, AR times Q. Okay, AR times Q, you get total revenue. So this is AR. Okay, this line is TR. So times Q here, you get the whole box, bigger box is total revenue. AC, formula is TC over Q. So TC is AC times Q. 
So AC here, dash line touching here. Can you see that? Okay. So here 20 times 9, you get total revenue. Okay, I just erase this one. Okay, so this is AC or ATC, the dash line touch here. So this is ATC times 9, you get total cost. And then dash line here, touching AR here. So this is AR25 times Q, you get total revenue. Okay, so total revenue minus total cost 20 times 9. Okay, here is the total profit, the difference. Profit is TR minus TC. For normal profit, it is a situation when TR equals TC. Yeah. So always remember TR you refer to AR, TC is AC. So this is TR. Um, this is <coughs> TC. So AR is twenty. So how much is AR? AR is twenty. So total revenue is AR twenty times. Quantity 8, 160. So this box refer to total revenue. Okay, total cost, this dash dash line here, also touch total cost here at 20. Okay, so this is uh, AR and also DC, ADC at 20. So AC20 to get total cost is AC20 times 8. You get 160. So TR minus TC is 0. Okay, because this box refer to total cost, this amount. This box also refer to total revenue. So that's why the profit is 0. This is a condition when the firm um, facing loss. Okay, where the total revenue will be bigger than uh, lesser than total cost. The cost is too big compared to revenue. Okay, so that's why here the cost AC is larger on top. Okay, higher than average revenue. So average re revenue is 17. 70 times 7. Is the total revenue on this box? This is total revenue. Total cost when this line touch the ATC here. Or here, ATC 20 times 7. The bigger box here refer to total cost. So when total revenue here, a smaller box. Minus total cost here, the difference is here. So this is the loss. Okay, so as a conclusion, when I draw a diagram, okay, I combine both. Okay, so this is AC. Okay, and then this is AVC. Then this is MC crossing the minimum line of AC and AVC. This is MC. So AR, if AR, um, okay, I change the color first. If AR is bigger than AC here, okay, this is AR. So the firm enjoy the profit. If AR is low or equal to AC, okay, this is break even. Profit equal to zero. If AR is too low compared to AC, okay, so the firm 
long run equilibrium, in the long run, the firm can earn normal profit, which is zero, break even. There are two reasons why the firm uh, only obtain normal, pro uh, normal profit here. Because in perfect competition, there are too many sellers, okay, too many sellers and uh, um, selling the same product, okay, and there are many substitute, perfect substitute. Okay, so if the firm enjoy economic profit in the long run, it is very easy uh, for other firm to join the market. Okay, so the quantity supply become bigger and you yourself will increase or expand the production too. So as a result, the supply will increase. When the supply increase, the price will fall. Okay, if you still remember demand supply, so this is equilibrium. Supply increase, this is a new equilibrium. So the price drop. Okay, this is the price. And then a loss in the short run will force the firm to reduce the production. Okay, so you're facing loss, so you reduce your production. At the same time, maybe some existing firm will leave the market. Okay, will close down the company, so the supply will decrease. When the supply decrease, price will increase. So the um the total revenue or average revenue okay increase decrease keep increasing and decreasing so in the long run okay the total revenue just at the middle moderate or in terms of the profit just a normal profit this is a condition when the firm enjoy the or earn normal profit only as you can see here ar equal to ac at the same value which is 20. shutdown point in the short run if the if the firm uh facing loss okay does the firm need to close down the company okay to talk gulong tika or just proceed with the business it depends on average variable cost. So now here, if you want to determine whether the firm should continue the business or not, ABC play an important or crucial role here. Okay, in the short run, the firm should continue production as long as average revenue greater or equal to average variable cost. So here, average revenue is greater than ABC. This is AR, this is AVC. So the company should continue the business. Okay, the firm will continue its operation because it can cover the total variable cost and part of total fixed cost. Okay, total variable cost, this is um, total cost, this is um, average revenue, this is variable cost. Okay, at this dash dash line point, okay, here is the average total cost. Okay, and this is average variable cost. To get total cost, P times Q here, 6 times 10. So, 60 is total cost. Okay, meanwhile, variable cost is 4 times 10, 40. So total cost is 60 minus 40 variable cost. So can you find the fixed cost? Of course, yes. The difference between these two is the fixed cost. So the fixed cost is 20. Or here, the difference between uh, these two. Okay, 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 times 10 is 20. So here is the total cost and here is the variable cost. So here is the fixed cost. So as long as the firm, the revenue obtained okay, can cover variable cost. Variable cost is the wages or salary of the firm. So you can still operate the business. So this is the variable cost, okay, the cost for labor. And you can pay a little bit cost for fixed input. 
okay and a part of fed's import you cannot pay okay you don't have enough revenue to pay that But if AR is too low, here yeah, AR is too low, okay, below AC and even below variable cost, okay, you need to close down or shut down your business because you cannot cover all variable cost. Okay, variable cost is here yeah, 5 times 10, 50, but you only cover 40. Okay, a part of the uh, staff. Maybe you can afford to pay the salary. Okay, so when you don't have enough revenue to support uh, the um, salary payment, so you have to close down the company. Okay, this is the fixed cost. This is variable cost. So you only can cover a part of variable cost. So you need to close down the company. Okay, or as a summary here, this is AC and this is AVC and this is marginal cost. Okay, this is Q and P. Okay, so to determine whether to continue or exit the market, um, it is determined by AVC here. So if this is AR, the firm enjoy a profit because they are more than AC. If AR is here, it is break even. But if AR is below AC, this is loss. Okay, but you can still continue the business because you the AR here is larger than average variable cost but if average variable cost the next chapter is chapter 6.1 monopoly monopolistic and oligopoly thank you